Hello, welcome to this year's graduation ceremony and many congratulations to those of you who are graduating today. graduate degree from Cranfield University marks you as a special individual from a distinctive university recognised throughout the world. Our alumni office will ensure that you're able to remain part of Cranfield wherever you are in the world.
This assembly is now open. Please be seated. My Lord and Chancellor, graduates, family members, guests, members of the University, and of the wider Cranfield Fellowship of friends and supporters, let me start by welcoming you to this graduation ceremony for graduates of Cranfield College of Aeronautics, the School of Engineering, and Cranfield Health. It is one of three ceremonies for 2008 being held here at the Cranfield campus. And at the outset, for myself and for my colleagues, I offer heartfelt congratulations to those graduating today. First and foremost, this ceremony is about recognizing you and celebrating your achievements. The platform party behind me provides a colorful backdrop to today's proceedings. But their position and purpose goes rather beyond that. The Lord Vincent of Coles Hill is the Chancellor of the University. It is, as ever, Lord Vincent, a very great pleasure to have you and Lady Vincent here with us once again in your university. And now to our honorary graduates. It is our privilege and pleasure to be able to mark the distinction of a small number of individuals each year by awarding to them honorary degrees of Cranfield University. These degrees are honorary in that they do not result from formal study in the university. Rather, they recognize outstanding contributions to national and international life made by the recipients. They're honorary in that we award them as a means of recognizing, of honoring these special people. But of course, it goes both ways. They also honor us, they grace us with their presence and their future association with the university. Brief reviews of the honorary graduates for all three ceremonies are in the graduation brochure. I'm particularly pleased at this ceremony to welcome in that capacity Giovanni Bisignani, Director General and CEO of IATA. Hugo Harima, President and CEO of Blue Water Engineering, and Professor Sally Davis, Director General of Research and Development of the Department of Health. Also amongst the party and on the platform and alongside are other members of staff, academic and others, a sample only of those who have played their part in ensuring that your Cranfield experience has been fulfilling. A degree from Cranfield University is special and it marks you as a special individual from a distinctive postgraduate university, one recognized throughout the world for the excellence of its programs, for, dis for the distinctive nature of the contributions it makes to society and for the excellence of its people. And after all, the standing of a university is above all else the product of the people, staff, students, and graduates. To those graduating today, I would say, be proud of what you have achieved, and be proud of your association with this distinctive university, as we are proud of you. We are proud of you, our graduates, and our alumni office will ensure that you're able to remain connected with the university. Cranfield welcomes students from over 100 countries, many moving here with their families from across the world. Studying for a higher degree is a challenging enterprise, greatly assisted by the support of family and friends, partners and loved ones. Whether or not these supporters are able to be here in person, I know that jo they join you and us in celebrating your success today. Graduation is a high point for us each year, and it should be a high point for you too. Cranfield University has an exceptional reputation across the world, and you are part of that reputation. I wish you every success for the future.
my Lord and Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen. Graduation brings friends and families together from around the world. Many of you have flown here, and if you have, it's likely that innovations led by Giovanni Bisignani have improved your journey in some way. Whether it was the way in which you booked and paid for your ticket, the safety of the flight you took, its impact on the environment, or whether you saw your bag at the other end of it, Giovanni has made his mark. He was appointed to his current role as Chief Executive Officer and Director General of IATA, the International Air Transport Association, in 2002. He spends his time divided between the two bases of Geneva and Montreal, spending alternate weeks either side of the Atlantic. When you can go to the moon on frequent fly points, I think Giovanni will be in a good stead. Prior to his appointment at IATA, he launched and directed the online travel agency Apodo. Formed as a collaboration of major European airlines and Amadeus, the travel industry IT specialist, Apodo has helped revolutionize the way in which we plan and pay for travel, effectively allowing us all to become travel agents in our own home 24 hours a day. Giovanni's experience spans several industries. He was the chief executive of the Italian flag carrier Alitalia. He's held senior roles within the energy company ENI. He's been the president of Italy's largest ferry company and the chief executive of SM Logistics. These are all great achievements, but as we always expect very special things of Cranfield graduates, why is he really here today? Air transport industry finds itself at a crossroads. Traffic is growing around the world, and so are fuel prices. There's an increased focus on the environmental impact of air transport, and many airlines are struggling to survive. Navigating these challenges requires exceptional stewardship, and this is what makes Giovanni particularly special. He's a charismatic leader, and certainly not afraid to speak his mind. Anyone working for the CAA or Heathrow this week will certainly agree with me. He's transformed IATA, an organization representing 230 airlines in 125 countries, yet the influence has gone way beyond even its membership. How's he done it? Well, partly by employing some great people. Air Transport Department at Cranfield is particularly pleased to hear this week that one of its graduates has been appointed as Chairman of the Board of Governors of IATA. But Giovanni's work has been to focus IATA in four key areas, safety, environment, finance, and simplifying the business. In terms of safety, he's been the driver behind a program called IOSA, the Operational Safety Audit Program. And in effect, what this has created is a standard for safety management across all of the world's airlines, something that no other organization has been able to achieve to the same degree. So much so that membership of IATA is contingent on an airline meeting that standard. They're not afraid to turn away even long-standing members if they fail to meet something that's so important. In terms of the environment, he's set a very strong but clear aim. That is for air transport to become an industry that does not pollute. In terms of finance, the air transport industry has pretty much lost almost as much as it's ever made, and reform has certainly been long overdue. I ought to have led those reforms, and in 2007, they achieved 3.7 billion US dollars in cost savings from charges, fees, and taxation, partly through the very strong advocacy played by Giovanni. In terms of simplifying the business, we've maybe taken for granted some of the innovations like barcoded boarding passes, check-in kiosks that we can all use, and how many people realize that at the end of last month, the final paper ticket was issued for travel. So if you did fly here, let's hope you've got an e-ticket. Giovanni has achieved all this with vision, commitment, and tenacity. By his own admission, he has a frank business style. He is unafraid to say, basta, enough. So before he does that, let's me, let me say, Giovanni, we're especially pleased to welcome to Cranfield someone with such a passion for air transport. Through your leadership, the industry is well placed to tackle the many challenges it faces. And so, my Lord and Chancellor, I am authorized by the Council and the Senate to ask you to confer on Giovanni Bisignani the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa.
With great pleasure, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa. My Lord and Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to receive this degree. And it's a pleasure for me to see such a fine group of young men and women starting career in the world's most exciting industry. I have dedicated much of my life to air transport, an industry that was built by turning dreams into reality. In my experience, life teaches you about the importance of change. And it is amazing how much the ability to fly has changed the entire world. The Wright brother flew first plane in 1903. In 105 years that followed, our world became a much small and better place to live. We now live in a global community where 2.3 billion people and 44 million tons of cargo travel by air each year. Today, 32 million jobs and $3.5 trillion of business depends on a safe and efficient air travel. I am proud that the International Air Transport Association has played a large role in fostering this growth. A growing industry must be able to face the dynamic challenges of today. The constant channel challenge for us is safety, our top priority. But today we face a whole new set of challenges. Let me just mention two. First, one of the biggest parameters of global business has changed dramatically. In the last week and months, that is the price of oil. The impact of this change will affect all of us. $130 oil will challenge us with many changes from the workplaces to home. Adapting and looking for alternative will require your efforts, your energy, and your ideas. The same is true for another great world challenge, climate change. Air transport contributes 2% of carbon emission. So airlines are a small part of a big and important problem. But all industries, big and small, must address this global issue. 12 months ago, I developed a vision for air transport to achieve carbon neutral growth, leading to a carbon free future. In the next five decades, we must develop technology that allow us to keep the economic benefits of aviation, but eliminates the negative impact on the environment. This will require leadership. While the leaders of today are driving change, it will be your challenge to realize this vision. Looking at the faces in this great graduation hall, the future of our industry, I am fully confident that you will find the needed solutions. And I'm also confident that you will be able to lead change to meet those future challenges with innovation. As you enter your working careers, there are two certainties. 
that there will always be new challenges and that your ability to change, adapt and innovate will provide the much needed solutions. Thank you very much and good luck. My Lord and Chancellor, as head of the School of Engineering, I present to you the graduates of the Cranfield College of Aeronautics. Firstly, I refer you to page four of the ceremony program on which the certificate of membership of Cranfield University graduates are named. I ask you in the authority of the Senate to confer the award of certificate of membership of Cranfield University on the candidate I shall now present to you, John Casares. Next, my Lord and Chancellor, I refer you to page four to five of the ceremony program on which the Master of Science graduates are named. I ask you on the authority of the Senate to confer degrees of Master of Science on the candidates I shall now present to you and on the remainder in absentia. I admit them to the degree of Master of Science. Samer Abdel Allah, winner of the Airbus Industry Award for Air Transport Development. Dimuthu Adhikari. <laughs> Keith Agman, winner of the Course Director's Thesis Prize for an MSc in Aerospace Dynamics. <laughs> Fabrice Alcania. Jonathan Anslow. Marco Bruno. Catriona Armstrong. Stephanos Avantidis. <laughs> Catherine Ashman, winner of the London City Airport Prize for Best Overall Performance. <laughs> Mathieu Babel, winner of the Course Director's Prize for Excellent Overall Performance in Aeronautics, Astronautics and Space Engineering. Cedric Ballas. <laughs> Edward Balma. <laughs> Mihir Baxi. Karim Bihaj, <laughs> Pierre Boubon, <laughs> Mohamed Belki, <laughs> Marie Campana. Paul Carroll. Arnoud Chalamon. David Chappell, winner of the C.K. Trotman Memorial Prize. Michael Shuway. <laughs> Garrett Charrett. <laughs> K. 
Carol Sochir. Makali Cole. Fabine Kuyak. Fabian Kudri. Robert Crera. Andrew Cullinan. David D. Monk. Stephen Dockrell. Makali Dodma. Nial Dooley. Yehan Alias. <laughs> Gary Allingham. <laughs> Matthew H. Mandy. Tim Eubank, winner of the Course Director's Prize for the best overall contribution to a group design project on the MSc course in Aerospace Vehicle Design. <laughs> Reza Fasilolai. <laughs> Andrew Fine. Javier Gohin. Adrian Goodwin. Cyril Gillamine. Holly Guither. Thomas Howe, winner of the EasyJet Prize for Leadership and Initiative. <laughs> Daua Hu. <laughs> Christine Jackson. William Jiat. <laughs> Fabian Jubu. <laughs> Shaman Tan. <laughs> Danielle Kingful. Andre Kloss, winner of the Eads Astrium Prize in Space Engineering for excellent performance. <laughs> Caroline Kloss. <laughs> Muriel Labadil. Andre Lafay. <laughs> Sundar Lama. <laughs> Lama. 
Julien Lopez. Gordon Mack. Berta Gonzalez, winner of the Course Director's Prize for Outstanding Thesis. Arturo Ramirez. Nicola Martinez. Caroline Moss. Onjen Matik. James McIntosh. Simon Meek. Clima Mercier. Christopher Mikolev. Andrew Mitchell. Javier Morizot. Nicolas Mouly. Thomas Mosden. Meek Meller, winner of the Boeing Prize for Addressing Change in the Airline Industry. <laughs> Alexander Neofaitu. <laughs> Nicola Paran. Carlos Lorenzo. <laughs> David Powell. <laughs> Yegan Pushparachalingam, winner of the Aerospace Sciences Departmental Prize. Adam Rodwanski. <laughs> Solvig Ragnars Dottir. <laughs> Laura Reby. Alexander Rivella. <laughs> Amir Robo. <laughs> Stephen Roche. <laughs> Thomas Smith. Matthew Scott. <laughs> Gunish Sharma. <laughs> Amar Singh, winner of the C.K. Trotman Memorial Prize. Pierre Antoine Sis, winner of the Fan Makers Company Prize in Aerodynamics.
Andrew Smith. Thomas Sopko. Nicholas Sorak. Julian Spencer Jones. Dukan Stanulov. Shayanin Sukesantiko. Sean Marie Tilakaratne. Ki Ting. Enrique Pena, winner of the Course Director's Prize for the best performance overall on the MSc course in Aerospace Dynamics. <laughs> Nicholas Toon. <laughs> Jerome Vijan. Zhao Zhang. <laughs> and next, my Lord and Chancellor, I refer you to page five of the ceremony program in which the Doctor of Philosophy graduates of the Cranfield College of Aeronautics are named. I ask you on the authority of the Senate to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy on those I shall now present to you. Birute Bunkite. Heidi Castle. Paolo Fantini. Benjamin Grazano. Marco Han. <laughs> Libish Balakandran. <laughs> Marco Calvite, winner of the Fan Makers Company Prize in Fluid Engineering. Vincent Lajou. <laughs> Yves Claude Jean Lemons. <laughs> Jeremy Maginot. Rui Perez. <laughs> William McLundy. <laughs> Chikaje Miyoshi.
Nulina Maud. John O'Connell. Giuseppe Ottavanelli. Sanjay Patel. Jean Ramon Ravelis. David Roshaya. Ben Thornber. Rebecca Wilson. And to confer the same degree on Jason Bennett, Catherine Knight, Rianne Leake in absentia. I admit them to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. My Lord and Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is a privilege for me to introduce Hugo van Hirema, President and CEO of Blue Water Engineering BV. North Sea Oil and Gas has for decades provided the UK with secure and reliable energy, assisting our economy to grow at an unprecedented rate and underpinning the development of our highly successful service sector. Since the 1970s, the hostile environment of the North Sea demanded world-class engineering and scientific abilities in addition to commercial and entrepreneurial virtuosity. Today, the UK and its North Sea neighbors are world leaders in offshore technology and dominate the high-value specialist and technological end of the sector. It is in this context that Hugo Hirama has excelled setting the standards and agenda for the next generation of offshore technology with a vision built on innovative research and technology. Hugo Hirama was born into the shipping and offshore oil and gas industry. Following an MBA, he worked for 10 years in the family-owned Hirama Group. He left Hirama and in 1993 bought out Blue Water, taking it from a small dynamic company working primarily in Southeast Asia, through major investment, building it into a multinational, world-class corporation in a few short years. Hugo foresaw the huge importance of floating, production, storage, and offloading units, commonly known as FPSOs. These, as the name suggests, are complete self-contained offshore oil and gas floating production systems, which can replace the necessity for a fixed platform and pipeline. Blue Water was the first non-oil and gas company to successfully design and build an FPSO in the North Sea, and now owns a fleet of FPSOs, which operate worldwide. The FPSO is particularly well suited to exploitation of marginal and deep water fields, areas which have particular relevance to the future of UK oil and gas production. At Cranfield, we're involved in several exciting offshore low carbon energy initiatives. However, we're also very aware that the UK will be heavily dependent on oil and gas sources of energy for the foreseeable future. Only this week, we've been reading in the media 
how important the remaining North Sea reserves will be to our future security of energy supply. For this, we depend on the innovation and expertise of people like Hugo Hirama. Hugo Hirama is an entrepreneur and a visionary who has and continues to make a significant impact on the world energy sector. He has built his success on cutting edge technology and research, pioneering a new exciting era for offshore oil and gas. Ladies and gentlemen, I can think of few people more appropriate to be recognized by Cranfield than Hugo Herrema for his contributions to the energy sector. And so, my Lord and Chancellor, I'm authorized by the Council and the Senate to ask you to confer on Hugo Jan Herrema the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. It's been great pleasure that I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Thank you very much. My Lord and Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, it's with uh, great pleasure that I have accepted this honorary degree. I am really very proud about my company, Blue Water, and the enormous uh, technical, but also other talent that it houses. What I have done is actually not more than uh, providing an environment in which research and development and innovation uh, have been able to take place and uh, where they are valued as essential tools for survival, profitability in the long time, term. That means that um, uh, we have to hire and develop sharp, sharp often young minds. Young people uh, with a lot of uh, technical know-how who are introduced by working for us into the uh, international oil and gas industry. People who after some time get a feel for what the requirements, the trends and developments of today's and tomorrow's energy industry will be. We are a company that doesn't produce chocolate bars or color pencils, uh, but what we do is we develop tailor-made, often prototype solutions that need to work from day one, that need to be budgeted correct from day one, with a lot of challenges in, in the technical sense and in the financial sense. Uh, in that process, we have always strived to be a technical leader, not a follower. And if you want to be a leader and if you want to push new technologies, uh, you don't really make your life easier because you really have to convince your clients that uh, uh, or your potential clients of the need they may have for that new technology of yours. Whereby you have continuously, you need to fight the omnipresent conservatism that abounds. And because of that conservatism, you're also confronted as a company with disappointments because you have such a good idea and it's not taken up. Because companies, your clients often, uh, and the people that work in there often opt for choices where they can be heard least. So you have to be strong and able and, and prepared to accept some disappointments once in a while. But the flip side is that uh, if you look at our industry and you look at the extreme developments in, in uh, extreme deep water, in the LNG field, in Arctic areas, in renewable energy uh, methods, uh, new technologies and solutions need to be chosen. So in the occasions that you or your company has an unavoidable technological solution or one that brings tremendous uh, uh, savings to existing technology, then it can be greatly satisfying and rewarding. You will understand that uh, I am not really, because of our business, worried about a high oil price. Actually, I like it. Anyway, being part of an industry or a company where you can excel, uh, where the industry provides the challenges where that, that your, uh, your, your, your technical people can go and develop things is, 
is, is, is, is fantastic. Uh, to work in a company and to lead a company um, that depends on excellence in the technical field, in the commercial field, and in the financial fields, and those at the same time, because you cannot stand on one leg, is greatly challenging and greatly satisfying. And what I hope is that all you graduates will be able to enter into such an environment and have the luck that I have had, and that you will be able to unleash your knowledge and your talent, and that you will achieve your ambitions. Thank you very much. My Lord and Chancellor, as head of the School of Engineering, I present to you the graduates of the school. I refer you to pages five to six of the ceremony program on which the Master of Science graduates of the School of Engineering are named. I ask you on the authority of the Senate to confer the degree of Master of Science on those I shall now present to you and on the remainder in absentia. I admit them to the degree of Master of Science. Izo Abdulanbi. Badar Abdullah Alabri. <laughs> Tariq Almu. <laughs> Shashapati Andukuri. <laughs> Eric Antoine. Pune RF. <laughs> Carlos Blas. <laughs> Sina Atabak. <laughs> Alexander Balu. Woshek Bober, winner of the Departmental Prize for Excellence in Grid Computing and E-Engineering. <laughs> Pierre Brandt. <laughs> Hugh Bretonnet. <laughs> Jean-Baptiste Bruce. Sally Brown. <laughs> Robert Camilleri. <laughs> Jacinta Guerra, winner of the Course Director's Prize for the MSc in Structures, Crashworthiness and Impact. Thomas Carr. <laughs> Pablo Fios. <laughs> Luke Chabay. <laughs> Chu Chen. Tehu Yi Chin. <laughs> Chin Singh, winner of the Energy Prize. <laughs> Masi Chokigo. Adrian Kura.
Kevin Cluden. Marco Covato. James Cockrum. Jean Conrad, winner of the British Gear Association Gear Transmission Prize. <laughs> Jerome Coursiers. <laughs> Pierre Courtoy, winner of the Roots Prize. Sebastian Couturier. <laughs> David Kurd. <laughs> Dennis Bowes. <laughs> Benoit Devin. Fulwar Diara. <laughs> Oluwemumu Dosumu. Thomas Duchema. <laughs> Marcin Ickner, winner of the Departmental Prize for Excellence in Digital Signal and Image Processing. <laughs> Enrico Fantini, winner of the Thermal Power Prize. Valerie Fouca. <laughs> Matthias Frenal. <laughs> Luis Guinal Redondo, winner of the Baxter Memorial Prize. Amila Gamaji. <laughs> Pavel Gankasi. <laughs> Aureline Garnison. <laughs> Enrique Gimza. Robert Gillan. <laughs> Gilum Giner. <laughs> Thomas Grillaud. <laughs> Ian Griffiths. Josu Gurudi, winner of the Roy Fedden Memorial Prize in Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Lireman Li Gerald Huck. <laughs> Nina Happily, winner of the Thermal Power Prize. Matthew Hobbs. <laughs> Johannes Holz. <laughs> H 
Javier Huguet. David Garcia, winner of the John Greenlee's Finlay Memorial Award in recognition of Endeavor and Initiative. <laughs> Oliver Jackson. <laughs> Pierre Jardine. Lina Yugu Jagod. Sandra Jossi. Patrick Kane. Arsan Kawash. Mikhail Kowalskiewicz. <laughs> Patrick Kubek. <laughs> Thomas Kukla. Adikola Laval, winner of the Process Systems Technology Prize. <laughs> Vincent Lanui. <laughs> Josu Lopez Diaraja. Olivier Louet. Juan Tapias. Dario Luciano. Tashfin Mahmoud. Martin Marks, winner of the Whittle Prize. <laughs> Swilis Slavisa Milasiewiak. <laughs> Justin Mills. Adrian Moolman. <laughs> Gerard Nago. <laughs> Matthew Narkiewicz. <laughs> Leonardo Nettis, winner of the Thermal Power Prize. Michael Newby. <laughs> Barbek Ninshahad. <laughs> Anyo Ogazi. Imanol Madariga. Pierre Yves Pasaguia. Amit Patel.
Joyce Damien Percival. Javier Di Ariluca. Pierre Perrin. Elena Pulieri. Mohamed Qureshi. Eve Ricoud. Mike Riley. Matteo Rocchi. Axel Rojner Road. Peter Rose, winner of the Engineering Mechanics Prize. <laughs> Nicholas Rothenberger. <laughs> Harman Ruiz Olaya. <laughs> Powell Ruzinitsky. Mustafa Sadiq. <laughs> Ignacio Moyano. <laughs> Stefano Charlo, winner of the Thermal Power Prize. Paulson Colley, <laughs> David Stanley, <laughs> Alistair Stevens, <laughs> Tibor Takas. Rahul Tangri. <laughs> Sylvain Tadi. <laughs> Stuart Taylor. <laughs> Daniel Van Stone. Stefan Voigt. <laughs> Stephen Wakeham, Wake Alum. <laughs> Meng Wang. <laughs> Javier Sebrian. Sheng Nan Yu. <laughs> Jean Paul Zamet, winner of the Hodgetts Memorial Prize. <laughs> Cyril Zintowler. And next, my Lord and Chancellor, I refer you to pages six to seven of the ceremony program on which the Doctor of Philosophy graduates of the School of Engineering are named. 
I ask you on the authority of the Senate to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy on those I shall now present to you. Arjun Bala. Giovanni Becchini, winner of the La Fe Prize. <laughs> Stephen Blaney. <laughs> Alessio Bonaldo. Baptiste Bonny. <laughs> Enrico Cacatori. <laughs> Pierre Casobel. Baikan Cho, Richard Murphy, Frank Noppel, winner of the King's Norton Medal. Wishal Seti, Andrew Stone, Marta Suchka. Patrick Verdeen. Marco Zuniga. And to confer the same degree on Vivian Bayer, Armad bin Mohammed Badri. Anna Chagolska, Georgios Dulgis, Nicholas Kershaw, Zheng Lu, Bo Zhu in absentia. I admit them to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. And finally, my Lord and Chancellor, I ask you on the authority of the Senate to confer the degree of Doctor of Engineering on the candidates I shall now present to you. Giorgio Ameyugo, winner of the Enhanced Engineering Directorate, Director's Center Director's Prize for Excellence. Jason Howard. Marco Padilla. My Lord and Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, it's indeed a great honor to present Professor Sally Davis, who is a remarkable woman and who has achieved much to improve the lot of ordinary people in the area of health care. She's 
Her official title is Professor of Hemoglobinopathies. Now, I'll have to make some explanation of that in a moment. But in some respects, it's appropriate that she's here, although she's here uh, as a graduand in health, she is a sort of a genetic engineer, not a, a, an automotive engineer. So I try to imagine how she might describe her interest in hemoglobinopathies uh, in a conversation with engineers. And perhaps she'd say something like this, I study that red viscous substance we rely on so much, which contains natural nanoparticles and is pumped around the body where it has a similar function to jet fuel. Clearly, it's just as precious to us, but much cheaper to produce. I am, of course, talking about red blood cells and her interest in disorders of red blood cells. During her career, Professor Davis has written in the region of 150 publications, including 50 peer-reviewed papers on her specialist subject of sickle cell disease, for which she is an internationally recognized authority. In addition, Professor Davis has published many papers in the area of research strategy and issues relating to academic medicine. And I think here it's important to note that she's one of those rare clinicians with practical experience of research within a laboratory. Early in her career, she was awarded a prestigious MRC fellowship working in recombinant DNA technology at the world-famous Courtauld Institute of Biochemistry in London. Her research training at the Institute may have influenced her current interests and expertise in biotechnology and innovation, which have in turn led to her being chosen as a member of Sir David Cooksey's Influential Steering Group on Biotechnology and Growth. Here and elsewhere, she must have made a major impression, particularly with regards to her ideas for a research strategy for the NHS. The reward for this came when she was appointed as Director General of R&D at the Department of Health in 2004. In her role as Director General, she's responsible for delivering the new government research strategy, best research for best health, with a budget of over 700 million pounds. And the new funding supports applied and practice-based research with a direct focus on people, their health, and their well-being. There are several key national programs supported, health technology assessment, service delivery and organization, invention and innovation. And these three key areas resonate extremely well with the types of activities we undertake in Cranfield Health. And it's gratifying to know that Cranfield Health and the Department of Health hold such similar interests. They're so clearly important for the general well-being of the UK population. Professor Davis has been instrumental in setting the new NHS research strategy that has now resulted in much major NHS research work being part of a virtual institute, the National Institute of Health Research. Several national centers are being formed and it's clear that universities will be key players in these new institutes. You won't be surprised to hear that her influence also extends further than the home front. In November of 2004, she led a, delegation, a UK delegation to the WHO Ministerial Summit, and in May of 2005, spoke on research and development at the World Health Assembly. She's also a member of the WHO Global Advisory Committee on Health Research. In her spare time, she tells me, she likes to practice what she preaches. She's a keen runner and tells me she prefers active holidays with her, families, with her family rather than basking in the sun. And quite by chance, Sally has another close connection to us, or rather a competitive connection. 
Uh, she's governor of Ashridge Management School in Hertfordshire. Sally has achieved much with more still to offer and I'm delighted and proud to add her name to a distinguished list of Cranfield Health graduates. And so, my Lord and Chancellor, I'm authorized by the Council and the Senate to ask you to confer on Sally Claire Davis the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. It's with great pleasure that I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. My Lord and Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I am indeed honoured. A famous university that I knew originally for its management school, as you've heard, a competitor, and I watch carefully how well you're doing. Now I shall take pride in that, as well as in the health and the rest of it. And I knew about your aeronautics and increasingly about your health faculty and what an exciting faculty, a university that is postgraduate and has that energy of postgraduates. For us graduates and families with our tutors, this is a moment, I believe, to stop and reflect on both where we are as individuals and what these honors mean to us. I do agree, it's education, education, education. So why? Well, I think it's because we're shaped by our culture. Not only nature, I'm a medic, so nature and genetics, as you know, would come through, but also nurture. And that is clearly made up of values, beliefs, and above all, our education. Knowledge allows us to rise, to rise above the everyday life, to change how we are, to move forwards. Knowledge is good in its own right. And indeed, Descartes, I've got to check the date, said in 1637, je pense, donc je suis. It is the basic part of humanity. It allows society and individuals, each of us, to open doors. And of course, if like me you read the newspapers, you'll notice that using our brains and knowledge will delay the rise of Alzheimer's. So knowledge is important to us. Today, as each of you graduands and we stand on the threshold of the next life, we celebrate this, your success. And you can know that this period will shape the rest of your lives. You can feel confident of the doors that open for you with this success as a consequence of all that very hard work. I have to tell you that my 13-year-old over breakfast said, Mummy, what are you going to do? And when I explained, she said, so you're joining a club. And I said, yes, I think that as a graduate, you do join a new club. And she said, is it of those old farts that you sometimes mention? <laughs> and I looked around and I thought, no. This is a club of energy. It may be a club, as you work forwards, of the great and the good, and I hope that you will achieve great things. And we have a lot to achieve today in health, with unrivaled opportunities to improve the lives of our people and the management of illness. We are harnessing knowledge from every field, and here you have unique opportunities, because we need medicine, we need management, we need engineering, maths, genomics, material sciences, social sciences, to name but a few. And it is all a world endeavor. You each bring your individual strengths to this endeavor. And I welcome you to the battle, the battle of better health for all, achieved through knowledge, achieved through evidence. And finally, we must remember and recognize today that 
this is the start of your new lives, and I want to congratulate each and every one of you, just as I welcome you to join that battle alongside us on health, making it better, improving poor health, reducing inequities. I thank you again for the honour. Firstly, my Lord and Chancellor, as Head of Cranfield Health, I present to you a graduand from the School of Applied Sciences who was unable to attend her own ceremony yesterday. Therefore, I ask you, on the authority of the Senate, to confer the degree of Master of Science on the candidate I shall now present to you. Patricia Jimenez Marti. I admit you to the degree of Master of Science. Well and now, my Lord and Chancellor, as Head of Cranfield Health, I present to you the graduands of the school. Firstly, my Lord and Chancellor, I refer you to pages seven to eight of the ceremony program on which the Master of Science graduands are named. I ask you, on the authority of the Senate, to confer a degree of Master of Science on the candidates I shall now present to you, and on the remainder, in absentia. I admit them to the degree of Master of Science. David Charles Adams. <clears throat> Sue Maya Almari. Ehino Ari Moog Ovbi. Arno Robert Victor Aimonin Glorio. Salim Ben Sultana. Arkanksha Batananga. <clears throat> Mariana Braga Montero. <clears throat> Aurelia Canta Pedri. Bindushri Chikamuni Yapa. <clears throat> Emmanuel Deschamps. <clears throat> Delphine Marie Denise Dumont, winner of the prize for best student on the MSc in translational medicine. Chijoki Elek Wachi <clears throat> Olga Ferrer Malin, winner of the prize for best student on the MSc in environmental diagnostics. Sophia Fukuraki, winner of the Tyndall Cup for the best thesis in post-harvest technology. Vania Patricia Ferreira Francisco. Christina Fuschluger. Andreas Glatz, winner of the prize for best student on the MSc in Applied Bioinformatics. Amanda Hanna.
Petra Caro, winner of the Course Director's Prize for the MSc in Environmental Diagnostics. <clears throat> Nadine Lisa Casidas. <clears throat> Shashin Navinchandra Kothari. Sahar Mahmoud. Ashish Sharad Malwadi. Anna Katia Marquez, winner of the Course Director's Prize for the MSc in Molecular Medicine. Angela Machan. <clears throat> Mathilde Marie Mortemet. <clears throat> Joe Neal. Dina Pacheco Nevesh. Karen Nicolette Nichols. <clears throat> Alice Claire O'Farrell, winner of the prize for best student on the MSc in Molecular Medicine. Marguerite Ortner. <clears throat> Amit Kumar Suresh Bhai Patel. <clears throat> Mitesh Kantilal Patel. Johannes Perham. <clears throat> Luis Manuel Pinto Pereira. <clears throat> David Jeffrey Pitts. Amit Pokali. <clears throat> Nerupa Puplarakrishnan. <clears throat> Naveen Teleti Rayo. Saeed Ahmed Raza. Kimberly Elizabeth Ridgeway. Martina Satleka. Rushikesh Rajendra Kumar Shah. <clears throat> Anna Rita Souza Serral Hero. <clears throat> David Sweeney. Lawrence Tarr. <clears throat> Angela Marija Tate. <clears throat> Ms. 
Katya Tamega. Satya Prasad Tagalamundi. <laughs> Near Raja Thiru Navuk Arasu. <laughs> Firat Sevket Ungut. Thomas Velna. <laughs> Malikarjuna Rao Vemula. <laughs> Sebastian Janusz Vasilevsky, winner of the Course Director's Prize for the MSc in Applied Bioinformatics. Martin, Martin Robert Wills. <laughs> Winner of the Course Director's Prize for the MSc in Medical Diagnostics. <laughs> Sabia Yunis. And next, my Lord and Chancellor, I refer you to pages five of the ceremony program on which the Doctor of Philosophy graduands of Cranfield Health are named. I ask you on the authority of the Senate to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy on those I shall now present to you. David Richard Cowison. Paola Gioni. <laughs> Anna Caterina Gomez Marcello Bastos. <laughs> Carol Gray. Mika Hurik. <laughs> Charles Oliver Parker. <laughs> Marianthi Pataraki. Natasha Siddharth Sagal, winner of the Silso Alumni Society Prize. <laughs> Suzanne Omer Swanwick. Peter Hamilton Tomlins. And to confer the same degree on Francesco Bonini in absentia, also Eliana Maffetoni, Guillaume St. Pierre, Minaco Takamiya, all in absentia. I admit them to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. 
And next, my Lord and Chancellor, I refer you to page eight of the ceremony program on which the Doctor of Medicine graduate of Cranfield Health is named. I ask you on the authority of the Senate to confer the degree of Doctor of Medicine on the candidate I shall now present to you. Gita Shetty. And finally, my Lord and Chancellor, I ask you on the authority of the Senate to confer the degree of Doctor of Engineering on the candidate I shall now present to you. William St. John Roberts, winner of the Enhanced Engineering Doctorate Center Director's Prize for Excellence. Vice-Chancellor, distinguished graduates, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a long, warm ceremony, and now is the time for you to savor and celebrate your success. So you'll be relieved to hear that uh, I do not intend to give a long closing address. I must just, though, add a few words of my own. Not least, I'm conscious of the fact that for all your hard work, I have seen each of you for about three seconds. So first of all, let me congratulate all of you who've crossed this platform today for the achievement it represents. Degrees and doctorates at Cranfield have a high international uh, reputation, which is an added measure of your success, and I congratulate you on that. And I'm sure you would wish me also to recognize here the contribution made to your success uh, by the staff here. And I thank them on your behalf for that contribution. Uh, not least, I should like to add my own welcome and thanks to the families and close friends, some of whom have traveled many miles to join us for this ceremony today. At any period of intensive study, there are moments of doubt and uncertainty when progress seems to have stalled and morale is low. And it is then that close friends and families provide truly invaluable support. And I would like to thank you uh, for the help and support and encouragement that you have given to those who've crossed this platform today. Thank you very much indeed. When you leave Cranfield, please keep in touch with it. Cranfield is about the innovative practical application of emerging science, technology, medicine, best management practice to useful practical purposes. And therefore, it can only benefit by maintaining contact with those who have gone forward in their careers to do these very things. So please, uh, through, as you know, the alumni arrangements, please keep in touch. And I wish you all success in your future careers, whatever follows next. Enjoy your celebrations, and after you've done so, please travel safely. Thank you very much. Would you now please stand for the national anthem? 